Yes! <laughs> oh, man. Okay, fried first fish of the day. Frog fishing, what are we going to do today? I hope we're catching them on a frog and flipping. Frog. Ought to be a good day for it. So hopefully they'll get bigger than that. <laughs> Midwest. <laughs> Quality. I went down to an area where... Why don't you go ahead and bag that second frog fish of the day. Oh, oh, a, little bit a little bit better fish. That's how they're supposed to eat it. That's right, sir. So that fish come off the seawall? Uh, it was out a little bit right there on the edge of that weed line. Mm -hmm. so. Little guy. Little guy? Well, he blew up on a hog. <laughs> Alright, Gary, so we decided to come in here. This would be a good place to do some flipping. But you picked up a frog first. Why? Why the frog first instead of just start flipping? Uh, early morning. They're going to be looking up in the morning. The frog bite's going to happen first thing. And then once the sun gets up, they'll get down underneath the mat. Then you can do your flipping deal. One, two punch. I think most people expect it to dip down a little bit, but. Oh, there. That's a better fish. Got a better one there? Unless he's just wrapped up. I think that was one that has been biting. <laughs> yeah, suckers. Look That's the what slop. they hang in. Down Look in the slop. The slop. <laughs> yes, sir. Healthy fish. Mm-hmm. Healthy, all right. We got a frogfish. Right ass lab. And a little tiny guy. He's cute, isn't he? What's the parking situation like? Oh, got him in the face! <laughs> oh, man. I guess they'll catch the little ones doing this too, but... Here. These big ones though. I think I want to put you in timeout until I catch you. <laughs> it's like fishing behind a vacuum cleaner here. And uh you think it's swimming warm and work somewhere around here. There he is. There it is. That dude's fish. I don't know what you can tell, but that fish came in right along. This uh, little creek, or not creek, but yeah, just a little edge here. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> See up against that boat? No, he was over there in those pads there in the corner. He picked it up and ran with it. Out of people. Of course, the cat Oh, that's it, huh? That's how you do it. <laughs> Man, that bite is. Tell me about the bite. What do you mean? The bite's a little off today. How so? They are not crushing it and running with it. Oh, there's a few that have, but just kind of go to pick up on it and it's just welded to the bottom. All right, Carrie. All these pads, there is some, looks like hydrilla sitting in here. How do you decide where to cast? When it comes to flipping, yeah. it takes a lot of patience picking apart a mat. And you will you might flip an area where you're going down 100, 200 yard stretches and won't get bit. And then you'll come to an area and you can catch four or five in, in one little area. So it'll kind of hold up in the same spot. So when you really catch one, you really slow down and work I good? I do, I do. It takes a lot of patience flipping, but it, the payoff is pretty good. You catch big fish doing it. And what I look for, if you can see these lily pads are a foot above the water level. Yeah. It's an area you can't fish a frog. Typically, you can go back through and flip those areas, and that's how you catch your fish. Everything like that. Well, he was on the outside edge? Yeah, he was. Now you switched that bait, you're throwing that brush off now. What'd you do that for? 
trying a different profile. I was hoping I could find a, a different size fish. I'll change the profile and color just to see if it change up the size of the bites that we're getting. So we've had some bites. We talk about, Tick Carey is talking about getting a pattern in this junk. Well right now, it is early. Uh, it's about 9, 9 o'clock in the morning. Maybe 9.30. Is there's hydrilla through these weeds or these pads? The bites are coming where there isn't hydrilla. Kind of like a bare spot in those pads. Now we're thinking that as it gets hotter, they'll move under the hydrilla. Time will tell. But right now we're definitely figuring out they are in those empty areas. One for the garment. Oh, there's one in the mat. That's a it. Fish. Yeah, yeah, better size fish. About time we get something up underneath the mat. Finally, one in the hydrilla there. Yep. Sweet, man. <laughs> Man, I had a work mask on a gun though. Holy look cow. Belly on but look at this. Thing. See what's oh, in his mouth? Look at look, that. What's he got? I think it's a bluegill. Catfish. Is it a catfish? It's a catfish. Look at that. Look what's in his mouth. And he still ate my bait. I think that's, like Carrie said, a baby cat. Yeah, that's a catfish. He's all slimy. Isn't that cool? Look at that big fat my belly. Belly on that thing, yeah. Well, that is a first on the hunter of fish. <laughs> Carrie, I'm glad I can show you how to catch some fish around here. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I saw I saw some pads move. And I told Carrie there's a fish up there, a little tiny patch, and then that's when I flipped to it. So really, what I have no doubt is that I saw him when I saw the pads move. He probably ate that catfish, and then I flipped to him and still got that reaction bite, which is really what the punch is all about. It's getting that reaction bite, and uh, so it's something to keep in mind. We've seen a lot of fish moving in the pads, but we haven't been bit by too many of them besides that one. But if you see a fish move. Why would you not cast to it? It just gave you its location. So it increases the odds. Is that from Muskie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This sucker has survived some battles. But he had lost the battle to the hunter of fish. I'm gonna let Carrie show what he's throwing later. But right now I can tell you what I got is a three out trocar flipping hook. Right now I got a one ounce weight. I was using three quarter ounce earlier, but now these fish seem to be in a thicker stuff. And I'm pegging it. So I got that little sinker there and I get that from Rocky Brook Sinkers. Is where I get those 50 pound braid, seven foot 10 heavy action rod with an eight to one one gear ratio to get them in fast. There you go, there you go. Get that sucker. Ah, ah, beauty. Man. <laughs> oh, that's the bite. <laughs> he hit that hard, huh? Yeah, he did. Now tell me about your I setup just, there, Kerry, if you don't mind. I just upgraded, I've been throwing a smaller Strike King Rage Bug earlier this morning. And then I was throwing a uh, brush hog for a while. Now I just put on the Magnum Rage Bug. Now you're, you're up to a quarter, three quarter ounce weight still? Or I'm still weight? at a three quarter ounce weight, yep. And you uh, you peg your weight. I do peg my weight. 50 Keep pound braid? 50 pound braid, yeah. weight peg, Magnum Structure Bug on a, this is a five aught choke R flipping hook. Oh, you got a five aught, all right. Yeah. Carry on about you, but I think I've noticed that anytime you come along any kind of edge, yeah. you can see where we're at here, you see the edge right there, and it seems to hold more fish. <laughs> That's another. Oh, we're going. 
And he's fish moving farther back, Gary? I think so. That one was up, you can see he was up in Hydrilla. Mm -hmm. They're sitting underneath the, the thicker mats. Digging? Uh, I don't know, we got wrapped up. Oh, big splash. Yeah, that's a good fish. one. Heck yeah. Right on another edge. Edge, yep. Clean. Sign up, baby. <laughs> Oh, all right, same guy, darn edge. That's, I mean, back to back between Carrie and I, but back to back right here. Whew. It's fun stuff. I'm supposed to be a teacher, but I think Carrie might be the professor today. <laughs> you got Andy Buzz up here punching and catching fish. You must be, uh, you must be like a sacred holy man or something. Voodoo, must be the beard wearing off, rub it off. Well, thank heavens, I am in the confines of my bar now. After a great day of fishing with Carrie Fry. It was July 1st, 2019, a heat index in the mid to upper 90s. But the patterns of punching and frogging really set up well. The heat, bass are ambush predators. And the slop and pads provide shade and excellent ambush opportunities for largemouth bass. But it's not made for everybody. You've got to use some very stout equipment, seven and a half to eight foot long heavy action rods with fast gear ratio reels. Heavy weights, ounce, ounce and a half sometimes. But the good news is it's actually a very affordable way of fishing. You don't need fancy electronics, big fancy bass boat to do this. You could be in a John boat. As long as you have access to the thick pads or the thick slop and weeds and aquatic vegetation, you can effectively punch and throw frogs. We appreciate you watching in. Check a look at these great sponsors of mine. They take care of me, they'll take care of you. Also, some promo codes in there to save you a few bucks on them. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, see you in the water. Oh, come on out of there. Oh. Oh, this is a legendary cat.